Thank you for waiting, ladies and gentlemen. We've invited the first class. Now we're inviting the executive platinum, platinum, emerald, sapphire, and for me, Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Crew Travel right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Rhea. I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome back, finally, Lee Harris from Blue Marine Travel. How are you, Lee? I'm better, thank you. I'm so sorry. It's been two weeks, isn't it? So, uh, but yeah, definitely better on the mend and uh, ready to go this week. Yeah, well, I mean, between the new office and BJ and running around all over the world and getting sick and, I mean, you're just a busy man. Uh, no. It's, oh, it's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. One week, one week away, one week with COVID. So it's thankfully all past us now and we're good to go. That's right. Well, it's Christmas coming up. <laughs> Got to start earning the corn. That's right. <laughs> So, and I have to mention, actually, that Crew Travel is brought to you weekly by Blue Marine Travel. We haven't lost the passengers since Lee Harris was born back in the late 1900s. And of course, their people move people. So, EU borders, what's going on there? Yeah, waiting times at the external borders of the European Union may increase once the entry exit system, also known as the EES, becomes fully effective in May 2023. That's what the member states fear, according to a compilation of comments published by the General Secretary Council of the EU. Published on November the 16th, the compilation consists of answers from the member states' authorities responsible for the application of the EES system, and that's regarding the testing system they have done so far and the obstacles they have encountered and their expectations. Now, the entry exit system is a new scheme that has been established by the EU, and it will serve to register entry and exit data of third country nationals crossing the external borders of member states. Through it, the EU intends to strengthen and protect the external borders of the Schengen zone and increase security. Now, the member countries have found the border processing times at the external borders will increase due to the procedures that each traveller will have to go through in order for their data to be stored. Uh, he's estimated that control times for passengers will increase significantly by the introduction, uh, the German authorities have noted, while adding also that at some airports in the country, it will be necessary to increase capacities for border checks. That's in particular during peak travel times. Now, a similar answer has also been given by the Austrian authorities as well who claim that the waiting times at the borders will be twice longer than they currently are this moment in time. In addition, it has also been asserted by the same border control will become more complicated once the EES becomes effective. That's as the border guards will have to differentiate between visa exempt and visa subject travelers. Well, I'm just going to put this out there. For all British people, this has nothing to do with Brexit. Just saying. Anyway, strike action. Wouldn't be another week without it. Indeed, indeed. A program of hard-hitting strikes threatens to cause travel sorry, disruption ahead of Christmas and into the new year in the United Kingdom. The targeted industrial action will cover workers in the Home Office, includes the Border Force, across the Department for Transport and in DEFRA, which will affect ports, borders and all areas of transport. The action is being taken by the Public and Commercial Services Union, in a dispute over pay, jobs and pensions. Airports and ports would be hardest hit by the walkouts with the potential for long queues. Now, a prolonged walkout by border staff at the airports will also cause airlines to cancel numerous flights. As yet, no date has been set for the start of the strike action. But obviously, as soon as it's announced, we will bring it here to you on Yachting International Radio. What do I always say? If you were Queen of the World? Well, that too, but pay your people. Indeed, pay them what they were. This is what we need to do. India, going out over there. Yeah, passengers arriving in India on international flights will now face minimal protocols as the government has decided to do away with most COVID-related restrictions. The decision comes following a decline in COVID numbers and severity, with authorities believing that many protocols, including filling in the pre-arrival self-declaration form, are no longer required. In India's Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, has issued a fresh circular detailing revised rules for international passengers arriving in the country. Now, as from November the 22nd, passengers no longer require to be fully vaccinated. The government still prefers if they are. In-flight masks have also been moved to the preferable category in view of COVID no longer posing a major threat. 
Now, the detailed rules are as follows. Before traveling, passengers should preferably be fully vaccinated. In-flight announcements about COVID will continue and preventative measures to be followed. Preferable use of masks and physical distancing to continue also. Any passenger with COVID-19 symptoms during travel or upon arrival shall be isolated as per standard protocol. Basically, the said passenger should be wearing a mask, isolated and segregated from other passengers in flight and shifted to an isolation facility subsequently for follow-up treatment. All travellers should follow mo and monitor their health post-arrival and report to their nearest health facility or call the National Helpline in case they have any symptoms of COVID. Nice. Emirates has some news. Uh, yeah, they do. Emirates Airlines has said it will be opening its biometric services at Terminal 3 of Dubai International Airport to all international passengers. Uh, the service was previously only available for residents of the UAE. Uh, the Biometric Recognition Technologies and the GDRFA pre-populated biometric database can identify travellers at multiple points in the airport. Facial recognition technology coupled with artificial intelligence will aid their access to lounges and through the boarding and immigration processes and will also be linked to their passport for instant identity. Okay. International passengers will be able to access this service starting next year by providing official consent through the Emirates app at Emirates self-checking kiosks or in person at Emirates check-in desks. So maybe the EU should talk to Emirates. <laughs> maybe they should. They seem to have it. They're switched on, aren't they? They know what they're doing. <laughs> well, if they're going to be implementing all these rules that are going to make everything twice as long, maybe why don't you just make it biometric? Everybody's doing it. I mean, go on. Exactly. I'm sure at some point e gates will come in and all all, all that palaver, but it's going to take a while to get there. So yeah, there's going to be delays for sure. It'll take a while and probably you know a few billion dollars. Yeah. French Polynesia. Yeah, so it's a, a hotbed for crew, isn't it? But the travellers might soon face restrictions when trying to reach French Polynesia, as the region has decided to cap tourist numbers. Now announcing a new sustainable tourism plan, which is set to apply until at least 2027. The French Polynesian government has said that it aims to set a limit of one foreign tourist per local resident. This means that the region plans to limit the number to only about 280,000 visitors per year. Now, despite the government announcing the five-year strategic mission, CNN has explained that it is still unclear whether the new visitor cap will also apply to French nationals. Now, under the five-year plan, the government aims to diversify visitors from different countries and to make it possible to grow its economy while at the same time preserving the environment and the life quality of its residents. In addition, the document highlights that the end goal is to make a transition to inclusive tourism, suggesting that French Polynesia wants to attract visitors from different parts of the world. Well, Lee, I have to say thank you very much once again for coming back. We did miss you. Uh, always a pleasure. I miss you too, Ria. Very much so. See, it's definitely good to be back. Nice. Well, I have to say once again that Crew Travel is brought to you weekly by Blue Marine Travel. We have it lost of passengers since Lee Harris was born back in the late 1900s. And of course, their people move people. If you are interested in any of the links, of course, they will be on Blue Marine Travel's website. Follow Lee if you are looking to find out what is going on on a daily basis. And Blue Marine Travel is available 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. So whatever questions you may have, they are there to answer. You've been watching another edition of Crew Travel right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I have been your host. We'll see you again next time.